for my first little exercise in recycling and reusing, I'm going to reuse all of the peripherals that came with the PC system. So the keyboard, the audio system, the display, the mouse. And to do that, I'm going to use this ESP system, ESP32, which has the ESP32 here. And I'm running FabGL, graphics library from uh, on the Arduino ID platform. And the neat thing about this ESP32 module is that not only does it have a an ESP32 with Wi-Fi on it, but it has these legacy peripheral interfaces. So here's a VGA connector for uh, video output. And over here we have a mouse and a keyboard connector, uh, PS2 style. And that's going to work well with my ancient peripherals. And over here we have a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. And of course there's some modern interfaces as well. This is a USB connector for power and an, a micro SD card slot. So this all fits into a 3D printed chassis which I designed to specifically to ca carry this thing. So it just it's got all the features to fit this thing and it just drops in there like this so it's a perfect fit and there's a lid and it's using these uh, my, my signature diamond locks to snap into place Just have to spread this out a little bit so that it can slide over and there they're locked in place and it's all very snug and it's not coming apart no fasteners needed so that's the little computer module that's going to be running with all these old peripherals and we'll just see what we can emulate with that and of course uh, I can put an SD card in here and let's hook it up to all these connectors and see if we can get something running so oh, VGA this is the keyboard this is the mouse And USB power. Maybe I should power up that monitor to see this thing boot up. Where's the power cord? There's one. Wow, we have a visitor. How are you? And there's a another power cord here. Okay, I'm playing power. Here we go. Turning on the Samsung. Oh, and here we go. It has booted up into a CPM operating system emulating an Altair 8800. And the FabGL library is programmed by Fabrizio Di Vittorio, a really, really well done library. So I don't know how much I remember about CPM. Back in the day, I was really interested in acquiring a CPM computer, but uh, I did not ever get enough money to do it. So now I am doing it. So what we can do here is 
DIR. See what's on this thing. Oh, look at this. We have Microsoft Basic. We go M Basic. Do we have to? Yeah, we have to do something else. Okay, so we're in Microsoft Basic. 33K bytes free. So let's see. Uh, suppose we want to say what is 6 plus 3, 9. Because it's an interpretive basic and it will print out commands on the fly. If we want that to be a program, we would give it a line number and type in something like for, oops, yeah. Um, let's do a print statement um, for um, plus two and we can list the program and we can run the program the answer is six surprise surprise so that's a really cool thing that we can do with an ESP32. Just emulate a complete uh, CPM uh, computer. So I actually programmed a, a program up here called E14, which I think I can load. Okay. We are in basic mode. Now let's load a program. Where is the quote E? Okay, and we can run this program. Just a really simple hello element 14. And to get out of this program, we just hit control C. So let's go back to the operating system and to do that we type in system and do a directory. So here's our E14 basic program. Okay, I'm back in the CPM operating system. This time I've got it a little better focused. I do not have my SD card plugged in, so there is no extra programs. Let me see if there is a B drive. DIR for B drive. And there are a bunch of examples on this drive. Um, so we've got Ladder, Star Trek, Chase, Tic Tac. Let's see if we can run one of these. Um, there's that classic lunar game where you have to type in the amount of fuel to burn every second and fight gravity so that you don't crash land on the moon. Um, so M basic, uh, does that run? Let's try this. Load Lunar Okay, let's run that Or not Okay, I don't know why I had to run it twice um, 
we want the instructions, we get a page of instructions which tell us that uh, we are descending at a speed of 50 feet per second or a thousand feet above the surface and we have 150 fuel units and how much do we want to burn so let's burn one and we can see that the speed is increasing because we're not burning much fuel and but and we're descending so we're now at 628 feet we have 144 fuel left and we probably need to uh, start to burn so we can see that uh, our speed now is decreased down to 60 and we're still 400 feet up 370 316 so we're gonna have to burn some gas here I do not remember the sequence to get this thing to land We're descending at 39 feet per second, 174 feet up, uh, so we're going to be down in a few seconds, but uh, we only have 69 fuel left. So now we're 99 feet and descending at 33 feet per second, so we need to slow down. Now we're doing 16 feet per second at 75 feet. Mm. 15 feet per second, 59 feet. We're not going to make it. We're at 44 feet. So in about three seconds we hit the ground and we only have 20 fuel left. Now let's slow down. Uh, as much as we can. 31 feet, whoa, we do not have, okay, so we touched down in 23 seconds, uh, we had a velocity of 16 feet per second, and we blasted a huge crater, and my family will be notified by post. So that's Lunar Lander, and, uh, you have to run it a few times to get a feel for how much fuel to burn and sort of do that computation in your head of the acceleration of gravity versus the uh, the boost from your fuel. So that's um, really nice that uh, I'm finally getting to use a CPM computer even though I don't really remember much about how to run one. There's lots of information online that I will be able to use to get up to speed on it.